us remind ourselves why we are here together hallelujah you're my brother you are my sister even though you are born from another mother you are my brother you are my sister tell them tell the person that is beside you you are my brother you are my sister even though you were born from another mother you are my sister I mean hallelujah now if you are not born again please you need to get saved because you can't say that <laughs> you really can't say that you know you know a lot of times a lot of people use certain things you know when they look at somebody maybe of another religion they say ah my brother yeah, not, he's not really your brother you know he's not really your brother <laughs> your brother is has to be you know, you know Jesus was talking I said he was talking to the disciples and I said my brothers and my sisters are those that do the will of my father and he was talking about them and I was like wow so you are you've done the will of God as you've given your heart to Jesus when you come into Christ you fulfilled one part of it hallelujah so I wanted to look at that person again and tell them you are my brother if there's a lady you are my sister glory be to God uh -huh. if someone is older than you beside you say you are my mother <laughs> amen Bible says that the elder ones you know look at the other ones as your mother and the younger ones as your sister so if, if you are sitting next to daddy that say that you are my daddy <laughs> amen hallelujah so you know we've been talking about you know the kingdom family and i'm trying to see how i'm going to continue um i'm going to wrap it up next week because on the 29th we have family and friends it's a it's a, it's a it's a special program and i want you to go out of your way and invite every family and friends you have because it's going to be very interesting very intriguing fun there's going to be a dance there's going to be all, all sorts happening here you don't want to let people miss out on and of course there's a, going to be a kind of raffle kind of thing somebody the, the, the family that wins will be all expense paid trip on vacation to some place <laughs> hallelujah glory be to god so you, you don't and now now i will make this this is going to be a sad thing for you because if you're a member of king's dome it's not for you <laughs> amen so you you need to ensure that the person you are bringing in will win so make sure you go out of your way and invite a family you know and if you don't have a family invite a friend invite somebody glory be but it's the, the gift is actually for a family setup glory be to god it's going to be interesting so next 29th will be awesome so just ensure you invite people now um we'll get the flyers ready and we we'll get all the videos ready so you can begin to help us in you know you know publicizing it on your you know handles and all that but i believe that you will learn a whole lot on the 29th remember again is it what the 20 what amen so mark your calendars and get ready for that sunday morning it's going to be awesome amen so i'm talking we're still talking on families why should we talk about families don't worry leave the screen for now don't don't touch it i'll come back to it but i need to emphasize certain things why are we talking about the family setup it's very important why because we have the society now that is beginning to dictate what the family setup should be like there's a whole lot of contamination and destruction in the sanctity of the family and when you look around the world and you see what's going on that even a lot of things are beginning to change there is a world view that is about the families right now and that's why you see we borrow most of our religion from the western culture and that is a challenge we have as africans we we tend instead of borrowing from the bible itself we tend to borrow from the western culture because maybe they actually brought the christian they brought christianity here but they were just actually channels of actually the ones because we can look into the bible and see what 
the family really is all about and God said in the beginning that he made them male and female he created them he never made male and male or female and female in other words he didn't make Eve and Evelyn or Adam and Steve I mean, he made male and female. So when you look around the world, you will see a culture that is brooding. Now, most of the time, I did a kind of research on, you know, the introduction of the LGBTQ and how it came into the limelight. And they, it spans far as from the world's understanding from 1826, it began. But I realized that even the, the LGBTQ, and this is very important, you need to know these things. Because if you don't know, you won't know how to, you know, pose a very good, uh, you know, discussion with people that will come on this platform. Because they have views. An LGBTQ individual has his views on what even the Bible is not even saying. And if you don't understand what the Bible is saying concerning these things, you can get deceived yourself. The Bible says we should be careful. Even the elect can become deceived. Hallelujah. And I realized that this has come as far back as even predated Christ. Amen. I looked into the Roman Empire. That's how far it goes. And now Rome was is signified for a lot of illicit and sexual tendencies. Rome. You'll be shocked that in the culture of Rome, listen to this please. In the culture of Rome, the male gender happened to be the dominating character. So even the women at that time were inferior. So a male dominating character is seen in his sexual prowess. Are you with me? In his sexual prowess. So in other words, and also in the fact that he can dominate another male. So less homosexuality came from room. It came from that corner. And they had such a strong culture on it. In the sense that, you see, if you, they, it was so strong that it became a normal everyday life. A male must have either a slave or as a boy. In other words, pedophile was very prominent in the days of Rome. They slept with small boys. In fact, they had them with them. It was part of their culture. If you don't, if you don't sleep with a male, you don't, you are not in the illicit, or rather, sorry, you're not in the league of men in their culture. That was why when Christianity came to Rome, it was a challenge for them. Why? Because they, they, they were used to this style of living, of living. So Christianity came to disrupt what they were what they believed in and that's why they were persecuted because if you read if you read the bible or you do history well you understand that gladiators came from rome that is the the that place where they always kill christians why because christianity came to change the order of things and they didn't like it now they didn't care if you didn't talk about it but just live your life in silence but when you now talk against it on what they are doing then they must persecute you why because it was their everyday life that was what made them men in that time so people that were gay people that were femin feminist effeminates they were there now what does effeminate mean i'm bringing history to you before i go into the scriptures effeminate means someone that behaves like a woman Someone that behaves like a woman. So, uh, you, you know, when you see someone that behaves like a woman, that's an effeminate. And the Bible shows against it. The Bible shows against it in 1 Corinthians 6. The Bible shows against it. It said, these ones will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, so you can see how far, you know, the LGBTQ was coming from as far back as the ancient times. Now, you will understand when Christianity came into, you know, the schemes of things and started creating changes left, right, center, you know, and then of course, we now are prominently, the average person is born in a Christian home. Now, you have an idea and understanding of how you should live your life, but you see now the world is beginning to bring back this system. The world is beginning to bring back this system. And so we have them having their movements again. 
the gay movement and they are saying let's men marry men and it's becoming open now now when a man marries a man or a woman marries a woman and they go and get a child how would the child be confused now because when you send your children abroad what happens there now they have various they, they, they no longer male or female the sexual orientation of, of that we had as male and female is completely being eroded. Now you have male, female, queer, and you have other things. Anyone you choose to be. So you have yeah, gender neutral. So you can, you can go to a toilet abroad. There's male toilet. There's female toilet. There's queer toilet. There's whatever you decide to become toilets so in that toilet a man and woman can enter there together because they don't feel they are male or they are female they feel they are they are whatever they decide to be you can see the confusion that is being brought into the family system of God because the devil only needs to corrupt what God has created. And if we are not careful, because it's becoming more rampant, check the movies you watch. All the movies you're watching right now, they are introducing gay lesbianism. It's being introduced right now. Subtly, very silently, very subtly. So your mind is beginning to record now that it's no longer a problem. You see, and that's, yeah, that's an agenda. It's an agenda because they are trying to get your mind to a place whereby you don't have see it as a problem again. Then when you talk to them, it's not a problem. It's my choice to decide to be this. And that this is an agenda from the pits of hell. Because Romans 1.18, open your Bibles there. Romans 1.18, it's not here. Don't, but open your Bibles there. Romans 1.18 specifically, you know, talks about it emphatically 18 down to 36 Babe, please read Romans 1 I'm open to easy to read all right go ahead read easy to read version Romans 1 18 God in heaven shows that he is angry with people yeah he is angry because they do not respect him mm -hmm. and they do bad things mm. because they continue to do those bad things they choose not to accept God's true message when you check that lineage, you see anything happening there too in that lineage. And that's why they're doing it. Hallelujah. David, what, slept with Bezheba at the rooftop? I mean, David slept with Bezheba, right? That was David, Abi. Absalom, his first son, slept with his own wife at the rooftop. Now, not only did he end with Absalom, Solomon took everything. Solomon, it was the, he reaped the harvest of his father's sins. Solomon had what? 300 wives. 300 wives. And 700 concubines. 1,000 women. That's why when, Paul, when Solomon talks about women, listen. When he said it is better to sit, stay at the rooftop than to sit with a nagging wife, he understands what he's saying. He experienced it. But Solomon took everything. The father sowed one seed. It didn't end there. The son carried it. Before you know it, his other son took it. Third, fourth generation. Everything you make, every decision you make as a man is affecting your generation. You don't know. It's entering them. So when you feel, when you see people that act like they're feeling that I'm feeling I'm gay, I'm getting called, check their generation. Something is there. Something is there that's is troubling them. Hallelujah. But let me show you how it doesn't apply to you. Now, this is where it came from, Exodus 25, because that was numbers, that was Moses talking. He said it here. For the, of the, to the what? Of those who hate me. Pause there. Now, people don't read that part. Who hates me? Do you hate God? It's not for you. <laughs> now, look at it again. Six, but showing what? Love. To a thousand generations for those who what and do what and that's where you enter because you have you are keeping his commandment you are born again now that's where you are hallelujah that's where you are 
So generational causes is not in your place. It's not close to you. It's not near you. Generational from where? My lineage is under Christ now. And even, even God changed this, you know. God changed this thing in Ezekiel. Let me show you. Ezekiel. Look at Ezekiel. Beautiful. Ezekiel 18, 1 to 4. I'm going to shift this so that people can see it very well. Now the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? This is God talking. What are people saying? Said the parents eat what? Sour grapes. And the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. Again. This is in Ezekiel before Jesus came. So even God had cancelled that thing in Exodus. He said, as surely as I live, he said, so for everyone belongs to me, the parents as well as the child, both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. So be, because, because it was looked as before that if the father should sin, the children will take the issue for it. But God changed it in Ezekiel. So generational causes are not for you. It wasn't talking about you. If you are born again, it's not about you. But if you are not born again, then it can hit you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I tell people, the greatest thing, before I get there, but you will notice something happens. In some families, even though they are born again, there are still some things that are still happening. This thing seems to be happening in their family. The first one died at age 45. The second one had died at another age 45. They always die at a certain age. I don't know if you are here. Some people, you see them, poverty in one lineage. Before you know, another generation, another poverty. Generation, another poverty. They, they just have a poverty flowing in their family. Or this one, you will see somebody that actually divorced at a certain time, the mother. The child also divorced at the same, almost the same time. The, even the child or that one too, same divorce. You will see a trend and these people are Christians. So pastor, what is the problem? I will tell you. And I said it, and I said it before, the greatest thing that can happen to an unbeliever is to give life to Christ. But the greatest thing that can happen to a believer is to renew his mind. Because people have sown all sorts into our minds. Generational causes. Breaking generational causes. We are breaking it every year. One church will preach one generational causes. We break it this year. And another again, they will do it again. They will go to another place to break it. How many times? How many causes are they breaking? They are breaking, breaking, breaking over you. And you're, like, you're supposed to be a Christian. That means there's something wrong with our teaching. You can't be breaking it in every year. Every year you break it, you go again, you break it again, go again and break it again. The Bible says we have been redeemed from the cost of the law, who just made a cost for us, for it is written, cost is he that hangeth upon the tree, that what the blessings. Now, I explained that last week. Because Paul was trying to describe certain things to the Galatian church. And he had to use the blessings of Abraham. Right now, we don't have the blessings of Abraham. We have the blessings of Christ. Ooh. Ephesians 1 says, Blessed be our God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all. Oh, you're not continuing. With all what? In heavenly places. In where? Did he say in Abraham? In Christ Jesus. The Bible says your life is hidden in Christ in God. So if the devil wants to catch you, let him catch God. <laughs> Glory be to God. So somebody said, ah, they will, they will, they will, they will come and catch me. They will, my, my star. They will. He said, if you ever are reading horoscope, you are an unbeliever. Because I know Christians do that a lot. You say, I'm Aries, I'm Leo. You are what? I am Tarsus. We are, this is how we are. You are what? What are, are you a necromancer? That is what necromancers do. 
That's the grandma said. That's I don't worship him. But we grew up with these things. I am Leo. I'm spices. I'm you are what? You you are waiting from where to where? The Bible never said that about you. That's why all these issues are happening to you. Because you've been saying, and you not dictate your life by what they say that spice, spices people will be doing. They are, they are this, they are that. Ah, that's, that's me. You are what? That is who? That is not me. Oh, oh then we now use our dates. Uh, anybody born in August is um, Leo. Anyone born in this thing, we are... Sorry, that is you. Maybe your family. Not you, not you. Hallelujah. Bible says you are a son of God. That is who you are. You are the son of the most high. Glory be to God. You are not any of those things. You are not an idol worshiper. You are not. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you all need to do, all you all need to do is renew your mind. Know what Christ has done for you. What he has wrought for you. So even if in your generation things are happening there, it stops because you gave life to Christ. It should stop because you are saved now. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. First of all, it says submit yourself to God and then resist the devil. So even though the devil, devil is bringing some kind of trend, when it comes to you, it can't pass, it can't, it will stop here. I will stop it in my generation. Hallelujah. Because you must know who you are in Christ. You must know who you are. Amen. I did I did a, I did a, an exegesis on communion. You you missed it. Oh my god, you should have attended. On a Wednesday, you should have attended. Jesus said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Jesus said so. Hallelujah. Are you, are you with me? He said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. In that same passage of scripture, in 1 Corinthians 5, go read yourself. He said, we are now bread. We are now bread. We are now bread. <laughs> so when Jesus says about himself that I am the light of the world, he says concerning you, you are the light of the world. What are we saying? What? You know who you are in the light of who he is. Since you are the salt of the earth. In other words, you bring seasoning to the earth. Without you, no seasoning, no flavor. That's who you are. Anywhere you enter, I bring seasoning. I bring flavor here. That is it about a Christian. When you enter a place, there must be flavor. There must be seasoning. When you don't put salt inside food, what happens? It's tasteless, right? There's something wrong about that. And then, of course, salt again is for what? Preservation. Salt has a way of preserving. Amen. So in other words, anywhere you enter, you should preserve. If there's death, because you are dead, there is life. Why? Because Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, listen to me. Stop looking up when you are praying. Look inside. He's inside you. He's not up. He's inside you. Christ in what? In you. He's in you. The hope of glory. You carry him everywhere you go. And I like the way Bishop Ayo or Rishi Devo put it. He said, look, you are carrying divine cargo. Everywhere you enter, divine cargo. Something is, a dynamite is working. That is who you are. But you know why you don't know? You don't know. A lot of times we come to church on Sunday and forget our brains in church. And then go home. And then we, we carry back the brain of home. <laughs> and we walk like, like ordinary men. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm going to wrap up very soon now. Now, education role in the family. The education role in the family. Now, the, look at this Psalm 78, verse 5 to 8. It says, He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel. Which he commanded our ancestors to do what? 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 So the next what? Would know them 
even the children yet to be born and they, they in turn will tell their children then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds but would keep his commandments now what is this values and morals are meant to be transferred to the children by the parents no child learns morals in their school no child will learn morals in school or values it's only in the parents home if you're not teaching your children values and morals they will never learn it outside if you don't teach children how to greet people they will not greet anybody it's funny how my wife will say some things somebody will come maybe somebody with a child will be there and then the mother will now be outside the public will be like greet now greet now why not greet now you have not done your work that's what it means sorry you have not done your work well when you are outside beating the child to greet that means you didn't teach the child how to greet in the house now, they don't even greet you that means they don't greet you it's in the house you start teaching them watch this the quality of your parenthood is measured by your children but not by your children but by your great-grandchildren the quality of your parenthood is not measured by your child or your children is measured by your great-grandchildren that's how you know if you are really a good parent when your great-grandchildren are emulating your value systems and your morals hallelujah that's why singles you must know these things Look at it, what it says in Proverbs 13, 22. God says a good man leaves what? An inheritance for his children's children. Hallelujah. We are talking family. It's not outside you begin to correct the child. It's inside the home. You teach them what they must do in the home. Any child that is way war today, don't blame the child. Blame the parents. There's something wrong with that parent. You didn't do your work well. Sorry, you didn't do it well. You didn't do your work well. And then we see this lady, Chidima, that killed one guy. And we wonder what's going on. Blame the parents. Parents is the problem. When you don't train your children at home, they'll go to school and learn, from any, learn anything. Listen to me, the first, the first time you smoked, who taught you? Was it your father? No. Your friends taught you. The first time you had sex, who taught you? Not your father was who your parents because you didn't teach them what these things are and so we tell people at a certain age start teaching your children what sex means i think from five years old yes start teaching them what sex means their body parts all these things start training them so they know hallelujah i was listening to a story of a pro former prostitute i mean she was a pawn she was a pawn um um actor actress and all, it all started from a house it all started you can trace the problems of people from your home every problem you see and listen to me please if you are seeing a dysfunctional nation it's because of a dysfunctional family and if you are seeing a dysfunctional family it's because of dysfunctional parents the problem was with the parents. So we have a lot of dysfunctional individuals because dysfunctional parents are from dysfunctional individuals. So we have a lot of dysfunctional individuals that are wanting to marry. So when dysfunctional meets dysfunctional too, what do they produce? Dysfunctional. Everything is dysfunctional. That's why we say come for counseling. Single critical so you understand you can you can you can mend all those brokenness you had all those cracked up issues you have struggled with you've dealt with in your life when you're growing up you grew up under a a family whereby the mother was not there you are broken you don't know you are broken but you don't know you don't you can't enter marriage like that because you will go with a mindset of brokenness except you have you have a figure in your life that mentors you or speaks into your life you are going to enter my same brokenness that's why you see my heart goes out for single mothers it's very it's a tough job it's a tough job very tough because the woman has to stand as a man and as a, as a woman and there's nothing you can do as a woman you cannot be a man 
there are certain things you can't do as fathers you can only be a mother the best you can be is mother you can never be a father so singles calm down be relaxed don't jump too much we have too many too many children born out of wedlock today because of people are not patient and that is because there's, a, there's so much dysfunctionality going on my wife and I we cancel I mean it's, it's, it can be very heart aching and then this child gets born an innocent child comes into this life and then ah, starts a rat it's, it's worse off to know that there's, that there's so much troubles in the world Jesus said there, are, there, there will be tribulations it's worse off to know in the world there are tribulations how much more when you now get a child to come into a tri more tribulatory situation without a support of a father or a mother because no matter how a man is he can never be a mother there is something that a mother can only do that the fathers can't do that's the way God designed it it's the way he created it it's a family set up they must be father mother and then the child can grow well in that home the father will educate what the mother can't say the mother will say what the man can't say that's why we need to have some meetings for single mothers we can begin to have some meetings for single mothers so we can begin to have them because we, there are fathers here I can, I'm your father now that child can begin to we, we are standing here as fathers so, the, so this child can look up to someone and say yes I can look at this one as a father let me, ex let me say this before I wrap up I'm going to round up right because next week I'm going to go into another level watch this I need two maybe one male one female one male one female come quickly one male one female come quickly okay my wife is ready to take the anointing and um, amen hallelujah okay pastor now you are getting married I need another. I need another meal. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Now watch this. Watch this very well. It's gonna hit you guys. When I cut this thing, I say, Ah, Jesus. Yeah. People need to understand this thing. When a woman is getting married, when a woman is getting married, remember, he never said a woman will leave her father. Have you ever thought about it? Why? What is hold, hold, she already married, so no problem. <laughs> I am secured. <laughs> no, they, are, they, are both, they are all three married. No, don't worry. They are already married. Now she's getting married. Now this is a father. This is a young man that wants to marry her. Don't worry, he's married. He's married. Though he's married, though. <laughs> now, come now. Now she's what this is symbolic. What happens? in wedding. It's very symbolic. The father is holding. He never said the he never said the woman leaves the father. It only says the man, but this cause, a man will leave his father and mother. Why? Because he now no longer needs that father figure in his life. God has elevated him to a level of father now. So when he's, what the, what the man does, this father now hands over to another father. To continue where he stops. So, another father is going to now become the father of this one. That's why the woman never leaves. She's still under another fathering covering. So happens when you marry. It's not that the, it's not that the Lord say, "Come, just give." People don't understand this symbol. The man is now the father. That's why, at a, when you are married to your wife, after a while, she starts calling you daddy. You are really a daddy to her, and you start calling your your your, your wife baby because she's your baby. She's now your baby. She's your baby. Check it. Any woman 
if you came from a very good fathering upbringing, you always want to marry someone like your father. Am I right? Yeah. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, I want to just enter this evil man time. We'll continue next. We'll continue. We'll continue next. Many more things I want to show you. I want you to pray. Father, help me. Help me. This understanding I have. Help me. Help me. Pray. Pray. You need to pray. You need to pray for you. Father, help me. Help me. This knowledge I have got, Lord, help me to put it in good use in my life. Go ahead and pray.